Hey guys, in this next video in our Dead Church series, I want to quickly address two common responses that a lot of Christians will bring up when we talk about faith and obedience and repentance and how that all works together. Uh, if you haven't been following our Dead Church series, you can click on the link above here. This will take you to our playlist. And really, this whole series is building on top of each other, so I suggest that you start at the very beginning of the series and work your way through it. I want to talk about two responses that a lot of Christians will bring up when we talk about all of this, when we talk about obedience and how obedience really is a part of faith and how we have to have obedience and we have to be doing the things that Jesus taught us to be doing. And we can't just go through life saying, well, I believe in Jesus, therefore I'm a Christian and I'm saved because that's not really what the Bible teaches. The first response that a lot of people bring up, most Christians bring up, is how do you avoid legalism? They say, how do you avoid being legalistic about it? Now, first of all, what do they mean when they say that? The definition of legalism is a strict adherence to a set of rules or law. Basically, when people are saying, how do you avoid legalism, what they're saying is, how do you avoid feeling like you have to do certain things in order to have a right relationship with God? This is something that the church teaches a lot. They say we have to avoid being legalistic because we have to remember that we're saved by faith and not by works. We have to remember that we're saved by believing in Jesus and not by earning our way to God by doing things. And this is a very common thing that is talked about in the church. And so it's one of the first things that Christians will bring up when we talk about how obedience actually is required according to what scripture teaches. Typically when the church talks about legalism, they talk about two separate things. The first one is we talk about the Pharisees. The church tells us the Pharisees were legalistic. They were strictly following all these rules trying to earn their way to God and we don't want to be like that. We don't want to be legalistic like the Pharisees. And so I want to talk about that first. While it's true that we don't want to be like the Pharisees, Jesus very clearly condemned the Pharisees for the way they were behaving and acting and teaching. It's true we don't want to be like the Pharisees, but what was it that Jesus was actually condemning them for? Because the church tells us it was legalism. The church tells us it was this strict adherence to these rules and these laws that they felt like they absolutely had to follow. But actually... Jesus said the exact opposite of that. This is what Jesus said in Luke 12. Meanwhile, so many thousands of people had gathered that they were trampling on each other. Jesus began to speak first to his disciples, saying, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. This is something Jesus warned about numerous times. The leaven of the Pharisees. What does that mean? Well, First of all, we need to understand what leaven is. Leaven is essentially yeast. When you're baking bread, you put yeast into the bread and that makes the bread rise. It was this concept that was used all throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament. Uh, for example, the Jews in the Old Testament were told to keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It was a reminder to them of when they first left Egypt, it was called the bread of their suffering. It was a bread where they didn't have time to put the yeast into it to make it rise. They had to just eat it as it was. Paul refers to this unleavened bread. It was the bread that was eaten at Passover. He refers to that leaven in the bread as sin. This is what Paul says. Your boasting is not good. You know the saying, just a little leaven makes the whole batch of dough rise. Take out all the old leaven so that you will be a new batch of dough without leaven, which you really are. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. So let us celebrate this feast, but not with the bread that has the old leaven, the leaven of sin and wickedness. Let us celebrate this feast with the bread that has no leaven, the bread of sincerity and truth.
So Paul is comparing the bread in the Passover feast, this unleavened bread that they were supposed to eat. He's comparing that to our lives, saying that our lives should be like that bread where there's no leaven in it. The leaven being sin and wickedness. And we should be unleavened bread that has no sin and wickedness in us. So Paul is comparing leaven to sin. Paul also compares this leaven to false teaching, where he uses that exact same quote, just a little leaven makes the whole batch of dough rise. And he talks about how that's like false teaching in the church that spreads. When you put just a little bit of leaven into the church, it spreads throughout the entire piece of dough. And that's in Galatians 5. You were running a good race. Who stopped you from following the truth? This change did not come from the one who called you. Be careful. Just a little leaven makes the whole batch of dough rise. But I have confidence in the Lord that you will not believe those different ideas. Whoever is confusing you with such ideas will pay the penalty, no matter who he is. So, in Scripture, we see this idea of leaven as sin, and we see it as false teaching. There's these two things that Scripture compares leaven to. And here we see Jesus in Luke 12, 1 saying, Beware the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. So, he's saying, essentially, this is a thing that you need to beware of it, because one, it's wicked, it's sin. Two, it's false teaching. And three, like Paul's saying here, it's something that is going to spread if you let it in. If you let hypocrisy in, it will spread. Okay, so what is my point with all this? Well, my point is that Jesus is not saying beware the leaven of the Pharisees, which is legalism. In fact, legalism is something that is not even mentioned in the Bible. It's never talked about. The word legalism, legalistic, legalist, it's not in scripture. Nowhere in the Bible does it warn about legalism, but it does warn about hypocrisy. So what is hypocrisy? Well, the word hypocrite in ancient Greek was used to refer to an actor on a stage. It was basically, if we would say actor in English, it would, they would have said hypocrite in Greek. That's how the word was used. So when Jesus is saying, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy, he's saying they're a bunch of actors. And what is an actor? An actor is someone who's pretending to be something that they're not. It's someone who is pretending like they are this other person, but in reality, that's not who they are at all. He's not saying, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is legalism, this strict adherence to rules, this strict adherence to the law. He's saying, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. It's, they're a bunch of actors. They're pretending to be something that they're not. And what Jesus has to say specifically about them shows even more that it's not that Jesus was saying they are being too strict. They're too strictly following these rules and these laws. He was actually saying they're not obeying God in the first place. They're not obeying God at all. Jesus wasn't rebuking the Pharisees and warning about them because of a strict adherence to the law, which is legalism. He was rebuking them actually because they were not following the law. That was his rebuke to them. Jesus said to the Pharisees, Why do you refuse to obey God's command for the sake of your traditions? He also says, You rejected the word of God for the sake of your own tradition. You are hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. These people show honor to me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is worthless. The things they teach are nothing but human rules. Jesus said to the Pharisees, You abandoned the commands of God, and you hold only to human traditions. Then Jesus said to them, You are very good at ignoring the commands of God, so you can follow your own tradition. He said again, by your own tradition, which you have handed down, you are rejecting what God said. And you do many things like that. Okay, so what do we see from this? We see that Jesus is not telling the Pharisees, you guys are strictly adhering to the law and you're being too nitpicky about following the law. No, he's saying the exact opposite. 
He's saying, you're not obeying the law. You are not obeying what God said to do. You've replaced what God said to do with your own traditions. So he's not rebuking them for legalism. He's rebuking them because they're not obeying. That's the exact opposite of legalism. He's saying, you guys are pretending to be people who follow God, but you're not actually obeying him. That's the opposite of legalism. That's hypocrisy. That's acting. He's saying, you guys are a bunch of actors. You are acting like godly, righteous men, but you're not actually obeying what God said to do. And he gives a few examples of this. Jesus said about the Pharisees, they do good things so that other people will see them. They enlarge their phylacteries and they lengthen their tassels. Okay, phylacteries were these boxes that they would wear on their head with scripture in them because they were trying to obey this law that said uh, you should bind the word to your forehead or something like that. I don't have it right in front of me. So anyway, he's saying like his problem with what they were doing was not the strict adherence to the law. His problem with what they were doing was that they were only doing it so other people would see them. He continues, those Pharisees and teachers of the law love to have the most important seats at feasts and the best seats in the synagogues. They love people to greet them with respect in the marketplaces, and they love to have people call them rabbi. So what Jesus is saying about the Pharisees there is that they are doing things for show. They're doing things because they want to be seen by others and not because they actually love God and are trying to obey his commands. Again, his problem with them is not a strict adherence to the law. It's not legalism. It's the fact that they're doing it because they want other people to see them. They're doing it because they're a bunch of actors. They're doing it because of hypocrisy. They don't actually care about following God and doing what God says. They, they just want people to recognize them and to give them greetings and to give them good seats in their synagogues and high respect. And that's Jesus' problem with them. So we see Jesus rebuking them because they don't follow the commands of God. And we see Jesus rebuking them because they care about the respect of people and not the respect of God. And he continues with more examples. Jesus says to the Pharisees and the scribes, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees! You are hypocrites! You pay tithe on everything you have, even your mint, dill, and cumin. But you ignore the really important teachings of the law. Justice, mercy, and faithfulness. That word there is pisties. These are the things you should do without neglecting those other things. Blind guides. You are like a person who picks a fly out of a drink and then swallows a camel. So again, here we have Jesus saying, you guys pay tithe. Tithe was in the law of Moses. And Jesus does not say, you guys are being too strict. You're paying tithe on your mint and your cumin. Like you're, you're going overboard with it. No, that's not what he says. He says, you're doing this, but you're ignoring what God actually cares about. The weightier matters, the more important teachings, justice, mercy, faithfulness. You're ignoring what's actually important to God. Okay. Elsewhere in scripture, he says that all of the law and the prophets are summed up in love the Lord, your God and love your neighbor as yourself. That's what's most important. There's another verse that Jesus quotes a few times where he says, he says, you guys don't understand this verse. And he quotes, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Okay, so what Jesus is saying is, this is what is really most important to God. Mercy, justice, faithfulness. What's really important to him is that you go and you are loving your neighbor as you love yourself. But... The Pharisees, they were tithing, they were doing their religious duties that the law of Moses said, but they were neglecting those other things. Now, Jesus does not say, you guys are being too strict about your tithe. That's not his rebuke. In fact, he says you should continue doing those things, but you need to stop neglecting the important things. Stop neglecting mercy and justice and faithfulness. Stop neglecting the things that God really cares about. Don't neglect your tithe. Don't neglect these things that you're doing, but also don't neglect the important matters. So again, it's not legalism. 
Their strict adherence to the tithe was not what Jesus was correcting them for. He was correcting them because they were not obeying the law. The law is summed up in love, and they were not doing that. So this is one of those things that I want to address with legalism, is that the church keeps bringing up the Pharisees as these examples of legalists, but they weren't legalists at all. Jesus never corrected them for legalism. He never corrected them for trying to obey God too hard. That was not what he was rebuking them for. It was the exact opposite. He was rebuking them because they were not obeying God. So we need to stop treating the Pharisees like they're this example of legalists that we need to not be like them. We need to not be trying to obey God and trying to figure out how to obey what he wants. No, Jesus was saying the exact opposite. If we don't, if we want to not be like the Pharisees, we need to learn what God wants and we need to do it. Now, I said that the Pharisees is one of two things that people bring up when they talk about legalism. The second one is Paul. And I'll read it to you. Ephesians 2 is one of the clearest examples. Paul says, For you have been saved by grace through faith. Peace to you. You did not save yourselves. It was a gift from God. It was not the result of works, so no one can boast. This is the second thing that most Christians bring up when we talk about legalism. And they say, you don't want to be legalistic. You can't earn your way to God. It's not a result of works, so no one can boast. If you're trying to obey God in order to earn your way to him, you'd be able to boast about it. But Paul is saying no one can boast. Okay, but here's the thing. There's another verse that kind of sounds like the exact opposite. We've talked about it earlier in the series. In the book of James, James says, So you see that people are justified by their works, not by faith only. So here we have two seemingly contradicting ideas. One is Paul saying, You are saved by grace through faith, not a result of works, so that no man can boast. And James then saying, you are saved by works and not by faith alone. Well, here's the thing. When we talk about works, Paul and James are talking about two different things. Paul is talking about works of the law of Moses. He's talking about the people who would look at the law of Moses and say, I must strictly adhere to every single law here or I cannot be saved. It's the people who unravel the 600-something laws. It might be more. I don't remember the exact number. But they look at all these laws and they say, I have to obey all of them. And the law says, if you disobey one law, you are guilty of breaking all of the law and the punishment is death. And Paul is saying, no one has done this. Everyone has already at some point broken the law. Everyone has broken the law of Moses, so you can't be saved by adhering to the law because you've already broken it. It's over. If you're saved by adhering to the law, you're already condemned because you have already broken the law at some point. What Paul is not saying is that you are saved without having any good works. In fact, Paul very strongly preaches that people need to be obeying Jesus in order to be saved. When Paul wrote to Titus, in Titus 2, he gives these lists of all these ways that different people in different situations in life should be living. He talks about older men. He talks about older women. He talks about young women. He talks about husbands and wives. He talks about slaves or servants. And then after he tells people, this is generally speaking how you should be living in these different situations in life, he says... That is the way we should live because God's grace that can save everyone has been revealed. It trains us to reject ungodly living and the evil things the world wants to do. Instead, that grace teaches us to live in the present age in a self-controlled and right way and in a way that shows we serve God. We should live like that while we wait for our great hope and the coming of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He gave himself for us so he might pay the price to free us from all wickedness and to make us pure people who belong only to him, people who are always wanting to do good deeds. 
So there, Paul is saying that Christ came and gave himself to make us people who want to do good deeds. So Paul is therefore saying that good deeds are a part of it. If you don't have good deeds, if you're not having those good deeds kinds of works, then you're not saved. Paul says this as well. Our people must learn to use their lives for doing good deeds, to meet urgent needs so that their lives will not be unfruitful. So there, Paul is again saying that works are required. Works need to be part of it. Otherwise, your life is unfruitful. And John the Baptist said that every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So that's just two examples, both from the book of Titus, of where Paul is teaching that works are important. Now, if you read through the rest of Paul's letters, actually a vast majority of what Paul is writing to people is telling them that they need to have good works. It's instructing people in what their lives should look like. And he sums up his instructions in 1 Timothy 1, where he says, The purpose of our commands is for people to have love, a love that comes from a pure heart and a clear conscience and a genuine faith. Some people have missed these things and turned to meaningless discussion. They want to be teachers of the law, but they do not understand either what they are talking about or what they so confidently assert. So what Paul is saying here is that all of these commands you see of his throughout the New Testament are really trying to tell people that they need to have love. A love that comes from a pure heart and a clear conscience and a genuine faith. And that's the same thing that James is saying in James 2, where he's saying that you're saved by works and not by faith alone. James is talking about good works, works of love. And he's saying this is required. And Paul is also saying this is required. So much of Paul's teaching is about how people need to have love. They need to have good works. And that is the kind of works we're talking about. We're not talking about many of the things that were in the law of Moses that Hebrews says were simply foreshadowing what Jesus did. Things like the food that you can't eat the sacrifices, the circumcision, the washings and ceremonial rituals. These were things that they had to obey in the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant. But Jesus fulfilled those things. And those are the works of the law that Paul is saying, we're not saved by works, we're saved by faith. But that faith is fidelity. So he's not saying that you are saved apart from feeling like you need to obey God. He's not even talking about legalism. Again, legalism is not the topic. Legalism is not talked about in Scripture. There is nowhere in Scripture where it says, you should not feel like you have to obey God. That is not in Scripture. Everywhere in the entire Bible, including the whole of the New Testament, teaches that you must obey God. Scripture teaches so often that we have to have works. And it's one of the biggest teachings throughout the New Testament. And one clear example is in the book of 1 John. 1 John is a book that was written to address this lie that people don't need to be following God, that they don't need to be obeying his command. And John is basically, the entire book is writing, saying, no, real Christians are those who are obeying God, and those who are not obeying God are not real Christians. So here are a few examples of what John said. We can be sure that we know God if we obey his commands. Anyone who says, I know God, but does not obey his commands is a liar, and the truth is not in that person. But if someone obeys his word, then in that person, God's love has truly reached its goal. This is how we can be sure we are in him. Whoever says that he abides in him must walk as he walked. Okay, so what John is saying here is that we can be sure that we know God if we obey his commands. How is that not legalism? The church keeps teaching that legalism is this big problem we need to avoid, that we need to not feel like we have to be doing certain things in order to have that right relationship with God, and yet scripture says the exact opposite. And John continues. Let me read some more of his examples. Anyone who claims... I am in the light, 
but hates a brother or sister is still in the darkness. So there, John is saying, if you say you're in the light, but you hate your brother or sister, you're still in darkness. Because if you don't have works, you're not saved. And we continue. John says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. The world and its desires are passing away, but the person who does what God wants lives forever. So he's saying, if you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. But if you do what God wants, you live forever. If you do what God wants, you live forever. Is that not legalism as the church preaches legalism? Here's another one from John. Be sure you abide in what you heard from the beginning. If you abide in what you heard from the beginning, you will also abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise which he himself promised to us, eternal life. So here John is saying, if you abide in what you heard from the beginning, you abide in the Son and in the Father, and you will have eternal life. What does it mean to abide in what you heard from the beginning? Well, John answers that in the next chapter. He says, This is the message you have heard from the beginning. We must love each other. So John is saying, If you abide in what you heard from the beginning, that we must love each other, if you are living that kind of life, then you abide in the Son, and you abide in the Father, and you have eternal life. If you love each other. Here's another one from John. This one is one of my favorites because John is actually seeing through the Spirit these lies that are going to enter into the church that are telling you, oh, no, no, you don't need to obey God. You just need to believe. You, obedience is legalism and you don't want to be legalistic. He sees, he knows the church is going to say this. He knows false teachers are going to say this. So he, he says this, Dear children, do not let anyone deceive you. The one who does what is right is righteous, just as Christ is righteous. Anyone who continues to sin belongs to the devil, because the devil has been sinning since the beginning. The Son of God was revealed for this purpose, to destroy the devil's work. All who are born of God do not continue sinning, because God's seed abides in them. They are not able to go on sinning because they have become children of God. So we can see who God's children are and who the devil's children are. Those who do not practice righteousness are not God's children. And those who do not love their brothers and sisters are not God's children. Right there, John is saying, don't be deceived. Okay, when, when the apostles say, do not be deceived, what they're saying is people will try to deceive you about this thing. He says, do not be deceived. The one who does what is right is righteous. Okay, the one who's obeying God's commands is righteous. And the ones who are not obeying are not righteous. The church tells us today that we have this thing called imputed righteousness. The idea of imputed righteousness is that God looks at us and instead of seeing our sin, he sees the righteous life that Jesus lived, which has been put on us. And so he looks at us and sees the righteousness of Jesus, Jesus' obedience. So it doesn't matter, essentially, if we live righteously or not. As long as we believe in Jesus, we get his righteousness on us. But that's the opposite of what John said here. He said, don't be deceived. The one who does what is righteous is righteous. Now, here's one of these things, like, the church is telling us we are clothed with the righteousness of Christ. That's a phrase I've heard so many times in the church. It's in so many worship songs. It's not in the Bible. We're not clothed with the righteousness of Christ. What does scripture actually say? What did John see in the book of Revelation? He had this vision, and what did he see? This, let me read his words. Then I heard what sounded like a great many people, like the noise of many waters and like the noise of loud thunder. The people were saying, Hallelujah, 
For our Lord God, the Almighty, reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him glory because the marriage of the Lamb has come and the Lamb's bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and pure, was given to her to wear. That's what they're saying. And John then says this. The fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. They're not clothed in the righteousness of Christ. They are clothed in the righteous deeds of the saints, of us. We are the saints. We are clothed in our own righteous deeds. Again, what I read earlier that Paul said really makes this clear. He, Jesus, gave himself for us so he might pay the price to free us from all wickedness and to make us pure people who belong only to him, people who are always wanting to do good deeds. This is something that is missing from the gospel message that's preached today. Jesus came to pay for us to be set free from wickedness and to make us people who want to do good deeds, people who want to live a righteous life. And therefore, on Judgment Day, on the day of the marriage of the Lamb, we are clothed in our own righteous deeds because we live through the power of Jesus, through the power of the Spirit, we live a righteous life, obeying the commands of God. Righteous works are required. Righteous works are part of faith, part of fidelity. Legalism is this objection that Christians keep bringing up. Christians always bring up legalism. And quite frankly, legalism isn't in the Bible. It's not a biblical topic. It is a man-made tradition. Just like the Pharisees, we neglect the commands of God for the sake of our own traditions. We look at the things that Jesus said that we need to be doing and we say, well, I don't need to do that because that would be legalism. Legalism is not in the Bible. Jesus never warns about legalism. Paul never warned about legalism. They all taught the opposite. They all warned about lawlessness. They all warned about being unfaithful. And they taught, do not be deceived. The one who does what is right is righteous. We are expected to obey the commands of God. Legalism, quite frankly, is not a thing. It's not a thing in Christianity. It's not a thing we need to worry about. We need to stop saying, how do we avoid legalism? The only kind of legalism that might be bad is if we are strictly adhering to man-made rules and traditions. And the Pharisees did do some of that. So you need to make sure that the commands you're following are the things Jesus taught by reading his own words yourself and paying attention to what he said our lives should look like. But beyond that, beyond making sure that we're following Jesus' words, we need to stop thinking that it's important that we don't feel like we have to. Because you do have to. Scripture teaches that you do have to follow him. You do have to obey him. That's why he said on Judgment Day, he will turn people away who call him Lord And he calls them those who practice unrighteousness. If you practice unrighteousness, if you are living a life that is not obedient to what Jesus taught, you're going to be turned away. Legalism is not something you should be worried about. If you're following the commands of God, you are doing right. There is no one in the Bible who is rebuked for trying to obey God too hard. It's not a biblical topic. This is not something the church needs to be worried about. The teachers who are coming along and warning you about legalism, they're like the Pharisees. And Jesus told the Pharisees, you go and you find these converts and you make them twice as fit for hell as you are. That's what's happening in the church. We're being warned that we should not feel like we have to obey God when we do. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne. Then books were opened, and another book, which is the book of life, was opened. The dead were judged by what they had done 
which was recorded in the books. On Judgment Day, the dead are judged by what they have done. Jesus said the same thing in the parable of the sheep and the goats. He said this in many of his parables. John said the same thing in 1 John 4. We can be without fear on the day of judgment because... What would the church say? Because we believe in Jesus. Because Jesus died for our sins. No, that's not what John says. He says we can be without fear on the day of judgment because in this world we are like him. And John continues talking so much throughout his letter about how being a Christian means we obey. If you're not obeying, you're not a Christian. On judgment day, you can be without fear. Why? Because in this world, in this life, we're like him. We're like Jesus. He made us people who want to obey him. It's not law, it's love. That's kind of what Paul's getting at. It's not this list of rules you have to follow. It's, man, I love him. And because I love him, I'm going to obey him. I'm going to do what he wants. I'm going to do what he likes. Man, John says that too. 1 John 5, verse 3. Loving God means obeying his commands. And God's commands are not too burdensome for us. Loving God means obeying his commands. Jesus says the same thing in John 14. He says it three times in just a few verses. Verse 15. If you love me, you will obey my commands. Verse 21. Those who have my commands and obey them are the ones who love me. Verse 23. If people love me, they will obey my teaching. Over and over again, scripture teaches that loving God means we obey him. If you say you love God, but you don't obey him, you're a liar. You don't love him. What other relationship in your life would you say that that's love? If you say you love someone, but everything you do is what they hate. And you're purposefully doing what they hate and you don't care that they hate it. That's not love. Love isn't a feeling. It's not just saying, I love God in my heart. That's not love. So to conclude this video, legalism is not something Christians need to be worried about. Legalism is not a biblical topic. It is not something the Bible tells you to be worried about. It's something that men have made up to support their theology that says you're saved by belief and not by fidelity. Scripture says you're saved by fidelity. That's what the Greek word means. So let's stop talking about legalism. Let's stop bringing this up as an argument for why we don't need to obey God. If you go through life saying, I don't need to obey God, he will tell you, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice unrighteousness. Now, as I said at the beginning of this video, there are two objections Christians tend to bring up. This was one of them legalism. In my next video, I'm going to address the second objection that people tend to bring up, and then we'll move on from there into talking about what does it actually mean to obey the commands of Jesus. Because like I said in this video, the only kind of legalism that might be an issue is if what you're obeying are only human commands. And that does happen. There are times where people come along and they say, you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do this, you have to do that. And these aren't commands that Jesus taught. They're commands that men have made up. When you start feeling like you have to follow all of those rules and traditions, you might be able to call that legalism. It's still not actually the definition of the word, but those are rules and traditions that you don't need to follow. And so we want to be able to distinguish what does Jesus want us to be doing versus what has man brought in and turned into religion. And so... In our next video, we're going to talk about the second objection that Christians tend to bring. And then in our video after that, we're going to talk about what does it mean to obey Jesus versus human traditions. All right, and we will see you in our next video.